Wow, it is a beautiful day down on the beach. I am seeing a ton of black sand down there. So uh, we're taking the uh, 800 out, the Equinox 800 again. Uh, the 900 and I are on, uh, I don't have a restraining order against it yet, but we're definitely separated. And uh, she's uh, she's been put in the corner uh, until we can kind of work it all out. So back to the 800, trying the 800, just seeing that if I uh, still like it as much as I used to. I know the 900 is a much deeper machine. I know that it has a lot more benefits for deep targets, but I just uh, am kind of over digging iron. So um, my lab, if you're listening, definitely feel like there's some way you could have a fix on that. I am using my titanium scoop from CKG, which I absolutely love the weight, love the scoop. I am also using my Steve's detector rods handle. Uh, I really like that as well. It's definitely strong. It does have a little bit of texture on the outside of it. Um, so it really kind of gives you some, some, you know, ability to grip it. A couple things you're going to note that I have not used at this point. 15 inch coil, very first time ever using it. I bought it about a year and a half ago. I'm finally using it. Funny thing is it has that, uh, and I re recommend these for anybody who's using the 800, the 700, any of the old coils, they've, they've greatly improved it with the new coils, but the old coils, the tabs break quite a bit. I've had two of them go, go kaput. So I use these uh, these uh, supports, these, these coils, the uh, tab supports down on the coil, that little green thing you see right there. And I have them in red, white, uh, I think red, I think I've got uh, yellow. Anyway, I went digging in my drawer to find if I still had one stash. And sure enough, I did. It's bright green, matches my gloves, matches my shoes. So I'm color coordinated for those who care. Um, this does have the detected uh, shaft, which I also really, really like. And then I'm going with wireless headphones because I'm hoping it's going to help you guys hear what I find so and hear the targets. So anyway, let's get out there. I only have about an hour. So uh, I've been walking around for a while without finding any targets. More than anything, I'm trying to test this 15-inch uh, coil. I'm also testing your ability uh, to hear um, the targets with these uh, wireless headphones cranked up. I'm getting just a tinge of a high tone. I'm hoping you guys can hear that. Mostly got iron, um, but again, if you look up here, the black sand is crazy thick. So it could be, uh, it could definitely be distorting the, the target sound. If indeed it is a target. It's been falsing all morning on uh, on the black sand, so. But it does sound like a repeatable target. Now it's going all iron. Listen to that, negative eight. And here's the crazy thing. I'm actually seeing a coin. Negative four, negative seven, and then all of a sudden it'll pound out to a 29. And that, I believe it's going to be a copper penny. Yep. That is exactly what that is. And if you look at look how much black sand, isn't that crazy? So uh, all that gives a false reading. I believe it's copper. I don't think it's a, uh, I'm pretty certain that's copper. Well, it might be zinc actually. I'm inclined to think that might be a zinc penny. Yeah, I think hey, it's hard to tell. I don't know. Further inspection, but I'm kind of thinking zinc just because the coating on the back looks like zinc. But that is my very first target with a uh, 15 inch coil. Now that it's cleaned off, let's see what it sounds like. All over the place. It's but it does have an 18 in there, which leads me to believe that that's probably what it is. Um, definitely a learning curve with this uh, with this coil. A lot of my friends use them and love them, so I figure I have to give it a fair shake. All right, I have a barely, barely audible. Sounds really small, whatever it is. It also says it's really deep. Now it's out, whatever it is. It says 1213. 
be kind of cool if it was a nickel. It'd be really cool if it was something other than a nickel in the, but I'd be happy with a nickel. Now it's kind of ringing pretty clear, but I do think I see something other than a nickel. Oh, shoot. It is jewelry. Um, it's copper. Whoops. But it is. Copper cross. There you go. Poor little guy's had a tough life out here. I right, got another whisper of a tone. Now that cross was pretty big for how uh, small the target sounded. This again sounds really choppy. Small. Doesn't really mean that it is. definitely reacting to the black sand as well now it says it's 12 then again that's about where that cross was heading up too I think I see a nail what is that? No, it's just a rock. There you go. There's the nail. Oh, bobby pin. Man, bobby pins can. Come on, Bobby. Bobby pins can sound pretty bad. I'm working on my uh, Will Ferrell Talladega Nights. Anyway, a little yellow uh, tips. Interesting. I got another. Choppy, really choppy signal. Sounds mostly like iron. It's having a field day. But now it's getting a high tone in the middle of it. So could be another coin. Now it's getting a, a real nice, clean high tone. So I'm thinking dime. Just, oh, ha. and a quarter rolls out of that black sand. Very green, very crusty. I right, got another target. Sounds like all iron, but again, so did that quarter. Still in the hole. Out of the hole now, and it actually is getting a little bit of a high tone, but I think it's I think it's a nail or it sounds really like iron. Hey, the one thing I'm not used to is how big the area is and I know uh, Jim is able to pinpoint using the toe so that'll be a learning curve tutorial needed to uh, learn in the future I really think this is gonna be a nail or a piece of iron or something yep bent nail go for a little panoramic view it looks like there's some sort of a surf camp down there getting set up there's a volleyball uh, clinic behind me guys got all sorts of stuff set up got probably I don't know, about 10 people surfing out here right now waves are real small and I was talking about this the other day about the glassy conditions and when I walked down here it was glassy now the wind is coming onshore and you can see the texturing on the waves so it's getting less and less uh, desirable with regards to the shape of the waves because of this texture. You can see it's starting to kind of chew up the wave. What you ideally want is either no wind at all or a slight offshore wind coming from the land out. When that occurs, it actually pulls the wave up and creates a much better uh, 
much better uh, shape and also for those who are swimming it's just uh, not as jumbly so again uh, if you're coming down to the beach and you're wanting to go swimming and you know and, and body surfing you definitely kind of want those conditions the one thing i will say is the stingrays are everywhere right now there's just tons of stingrays so be really careful do the shuffle if you come out to the beach that means moving your feet low and you'll actually kick up the stingrays rather than stepping on them and having their tails hit you getting a whisper of a high tone right here just a barely barely just a little tiny chirp like a bird now it sounds like it's all 32 oh and it is a quarter all right tell you guys one thing I would highly recommend and you'll notice I don't necessarily do it when I'm in the wet you know if the waves are actually coming in and washing out and filling in the hole it's not as big a deal but when you're out on the dry and you leave holes people do fall in them and number two um, I've heard there are three or four beaches that are technically illegal to hunt because people have fallen in the holes so um, really highly recommend if you guys are out at the beach that uh, you guys fill in your holes because uh, people get really, really upset when they fall on them. All right, I'm almost out to my umbrella. And uh, the wife is laying out. It's kind of a first day at the beach since surgery. So definitely on the mend. And uh, she said it was okay to go do a little detecting. So, I'm going to take her up on that and go do a little detecting. Whole lot of people in the towel line. Waves are kind of small. It's kind of a medium high tide. I'm walking up to the car. I got a doctor's appointment, so I got to go. Um, but did get a chattery signal I think it's going to be a bottle cap oh Modella that's why it kind of had a little bit of a this foil coating on the Modellas is uh, <laughs> number one often a heart stopper when you see it in your scoop but number two it really does give it a, a you know almost a low mid tone sometimes all right, this is, uh, I think, my last target to dig. I got a choppy little thing, mostly iron, but I did get a little bit of a chirp out of it. Now it's mostly chirping. It says it's a 13. Again, I don't know if... Uh... All over the place, 12, 13 iron. Now it's saying 13 pretty consistently. 12, 13. Might be a nickel. Oh, no, what it is, <laughs> that is a bearing case. You know, it holds the bearings in, and I'm thinking it's probably by the size of it from a bike sprocket. Or, a, yeah, probably a bike sprocket. And the rear rear of a bicycle is about the right size yeah, it's round and it's metal all right this is all iron um, again I'm really just kind of digging everything because there aren't that many targets number one and for my own learning curve I really want to get to a point where I can kind of theoretically trust what I'm hearing and uh, right now I'm getting a negative eight now it's gone to a high tone, which oftentimes with uh, both the 800 and 900 means that it might be a uh, 10 stake. But now it's acting like a quarter. So if this thing is a quarter or a dime, uh, it really flew in the uh, face of, of what a target should sound like. 
I hear something. Oh, I think I have what's left of a Hot Wheel car. That is exactly what that is. But again, that was all iron while it was in the hole. All right, back down to the beach. I'm here actually for my club's hunt. So this club right here is the West Coast Treasure Hunters Club, and, and that's my club. Um, the next group down is the Route 66 Club, and uh, they're a different group. So this club is called uh, Route 66 Gold Miners out of Brea, California. And if you notice, they're having a huge hunt. And there are, I think Jim count them, either four or five uh, kids out there that are that are getting involved in this. And it's so cool. And they are out there detecting in the middle of the field and finding stuff. So, you know, if you got kids and you think they, uh, they wouldn't enjoy this, give them a detector. It's funny how often I do see parents walking with kids on the beach. In fact, I was just watching... Uh, guy named Jason's video down in San Diego and he was talking to a dad who had his child out with him detecting. Pretty cool. Pretty darn cool. Five minute warning for their hunt. Look, look what Jim's wearing. He's wearing the uh, limited edition gray. Uh, <laughs> the gray. Oh, that's my buddy. That's <laughs> supporting. All right, I just borrowed may have stolen Jim's uh, electric bike here. And uh, this thing is a beast. I'm gonna pump it up a little bit. I don't wanna speed too much. People come through here at what I consider to be ridiculous speeds. And uh, you know, there's little kids around and all that good stuff. So I just don't think you, the speed limit is technically 10 miles an hour. I'm doing about nine and a half miles an hour right now. But man, this thing is cool. So uh, I think he's gonna be running a video on it here pretty quick, but. He let his big fat friend try it and it just has all sorts of power again i'm not i'm not hitting it at all um, and i don't want to with the uh, a lot of joggers and people uh walking around so alex just got here he's been out hunting i i was out testing jim's e-bike notice jim's beautifully uh detailed shirt over there and Alex just walked up, and let me tell you, Alex said he found some crap on the beach. So crap. let's let's see the crap you found. Well, found a lot of. See. It's a brand. Stop it right now. We actually have sunglasses named C R A P crap. And if you look on the inside, it literally says crap eyewear. Crap eyewear. Get a little crap in your eye. Let's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. get. The world's second largest uh, earring, the largest one I found about a month ago was maybe Just fits a quarter bigger head. than this, but that's pretty big, pretty big. You can't find it. Earring. Here somewhere. And oh, we got the uh, big mama. infamous Big Mama stainless steel ring. I'm calling a 13 on that. Oh, that thing's, that thing's massive. The human ring size. What did that ring up? I do not recall. Okay. I've never seen this one. The mine detector? Alex just found a metal detecting soldier. Look at that. That is so cool. Yeah, that's a mine detector. This guy is looking wow. for mines. That's really neat, Alex. All right, we got a pretty good little turnout for the uh, club hunt. Play a little gambling game called 50 50. Yeah, it's actually a brand. No, they actually says. And I get, uh, we'll go 10. 10? Yeah. yeah. A Scott found a Ray Ban uh, glasses. Oh, nice. Uh, I have a stack of shirts. The question is always can you see through them? Yeah. Thank you, sir. Yeah, just done. Yeah. If you can get them fresh, they're. Rick sold me a pair one time. <laughs> he charged me 10 bucks and they were perfect Ray-Ban Wayfarers. Like, you know, $140 glasses. Thank you. We're about to start our hunt. If you're into Oakland A's, you got a free beanie right there. Here comes Russell. Russell, you're on, you're on film, buddy. 
All right, we're getting ready to go. Yeah, no matter where you live, um, reach out and see if there's a metal drinking club near you because it really is a great way to number one, get acquainted with other people that have the same interest. But number two, it, it gives you the ability to kind of hone your skills. The thing about these seated hunts is um, if you've never, you know, really metal detected, especially on the beach, but they do it at parks and fields and all sorts of stuff, they basically take, you know, a ton of coins. Sometimes it's uh, tokens. Uh, the group next to us actually had a silver hunt, which means every coin that they threw out there was silver. And these groups um, have these hunts usually once a month. So they really kind of help you learn how to hear certain signals, certain signals in certain, you know, uh, situations, like I said, fields, um, in parks. You know, for me, I don't hunt a lot of parks. So for me to be able to kind of hear the differences between the beach and the park is pretty drastic. So um, the interesting thing is where we're at right now, too, you notice there's a lot of gravel. So you're kind of having to work through that gravel to find the, the coins. Uh, in my case, I found almost only nickels. Uh, there are, uh, and I don't remember the exact amount, but a ton of glad. So dimes, quarters, nickels. And then this particular hunt, the tokens are zinc pennies, and they're painted white with the number on them. So with uh, a number one, two, or five, and again, I think there was one that was sent. We're worth either one, two, or five dollars. Sure, my friend Russell's one who up the fun together. Most of the time, they have some sort of tokens. I went to one at one point time, they actually had 22 bullet shells for the tokens, and they were really hard to get because they would fall through your scoop. So, yeah, there's a lot of different techniques as to how people do this. A lot of the guys use small hand scoops, and they literally just scoop and then pour into their uh, finds bag. Probably the best way. I unfortunately am using my regular sand scoop, and if you notice, I'm actually scooping multiple coins and then cleaning out my scoop. The problem with that is I do have a lot of gravel in there as well, so even if I'm trying to, you know, segregate the gravel, I still end up with a ton of gravel in my fine bag, as you guys will see at the end, but uh, I am scooping multiple coins at the same time, and that seems to be, uh, for me, the most productive way to do it, so I usually get up like five or six coins, and then I take those out and put them in my pouch. And as you can tell, we had a pretty good turnout. I think we had a total of 30 people out there on the field so pretty good uh, chunk of people again uh, my buddy ralph usually does about the best i think he got he got one token he also got i think like 15 dollars in change so um it tells you you know how somebody who's got really good technique can actually do much better here than somebody like myself who just doesn't have the technique to work in these uh, conditions as quickly as others yeah, sorry about the video um, not, you know, having any focus on the coins uh, that I'm finding. I really wanted you guys to see the field and how many other people are out there and kind of their techniques. Um, but it did not lend itself to being able to show you what the actual coins are and how many are in my scoop. And I do realize it's a little boring watching this over and over and over again. And I did edit out, you know, most of it, as you can tell by the count of uh, coins at the end of this video. But I just kind of want to let you guys see, you know, what everybody's doing them including myself um i probably should have just sat and and videoed others or walked around videoing others that would probably been a better way to do it but kind of wanted to give you guys you know an idea of what uh, a live hunt looks like because um they are a lot of fun and you literally are digging coin after coin after coin after coin and again it gives you that ability you know after that repetition to start recognizing specific tones Again, as I mentioned, you know, and I hadn't really noticed this out on the beach because I don't get that many new nickels. But the new nickels have a completely, I don't want to say completely, quite a bit different tone than one of the older nickels. Now, they both read up the same, but it is a different tone. It's a much chattier, you know, kind of rougher tone. And knowing that and hearing that, um, you know, really helps me kind of, you know, refine my hunting skills when I'm out in the field. And, uh, you know, the one thing about nickels, everybody knows this, they're really close rebel. to gold rings. So, what's that? Uh, I can't tell you how many gold rings I've found at <laughs> 13 which is right about where a nickel lands on the Equinox 800. Um, on the Equinox 900, I did get uh, both my gold rings were right in the you know, nickel slash pull tap tones, which was a 31 and a uh, 28, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, 27, 28 on the 900. You get one? 
Is it a dime? Penny. Penny. <laughs> Alex, there you are. You show up at 10.30 for a 10.30 hunt? Yeah. Good job, my buddy Alex. Uh, if you haven't checked out his channel, he's got a great YouTube channel called Metal Detecting on the Spectrum. So uh, if you haven't checked it out, please do. Metal Detecting on the Spectrum. So yeah, if you guys are absolutely bored by now, it will not hurt my feelings if you just fast forward uh, to the end of this. Again, the wrap up. Um, We'll, uh, you know, have the coins from this. I do have the other two little ones prior. Not a lot of stuff, but we will have the big giveaway. So that is the end of this video. So if you guys are participating in that, again, not going to hurt my feelings if you guys fast forward this. Never been to a live hunt. Might be worth watching it, but uh, again, not going to hurt my feelings if you fast forward. Yeah, and regarding the giveaway, if you guys um, are, you know, playing the game, make sure that if you win, if you're the winner this time, you email me as quickly as possible so I can ship that stuff out. Again, email me. I'm going to put my email yeah, right here. There's <laughs> so many nickels. <laughs> Definitely a lot of nickels. I'm telling you. Crazy amount of nickels. I think a lot of people miss them because of their tone, especially the new ones. That nickels are plenty. Really? A lot of nickels. You started on the right side then. I'm, I got a cool piece of sea glass. It's I did like too. A little, I got a much smaller version. Yeah, mine's not nearly that good. Kind of cool we both got to sea glass as a byproduct. So, always cool to find sea glass. I personally think it's good luck. Definitely redundant. And uh, again, you know, don't be afraid to fast forward. But uh, it, it really is a beautiful day out here. What's that? I do not like can't find nickels. All I'm finding is nickels. I can't find one nickel. A lot of nickels. <laughs> it is, it is, you know. Still a little overcast, which is kind of nice. It's just kind of cool. Uh, by midday, it was uh, well into the you know mid to high 70s, which is still, in my opinion, very very livable. Uh, one of the great things about living where we live, we get a coastal breeze most of the time, not all the time. So. And of course, my friend Alex over here. See the penny yet? I have not. Have you? You get a couple of them? Is it, can you tell if it's a zinker or a stinker? Zinker. And as you can tell, the uh, field is starting to thin out and uh, we're getting a lot less uh, coins, a lot less targets. So um, I'm gonna probably just go a little bit longer. Did not find a single zinc penny. Yeah, it's a total bummer. I didn't get a single zinc penny and those were the tokens. So better luck to me next time. But uh, it was still a lot of fun. It's like nickel central out here. Oh, it's so many nickels. <laughs> That's crazy. That's why it sounds in one hole. Why? Two dimes in one hole. It just sounded weird. The one thing I did notice with my sea hunters, if I got close to guys that were running wireless on these things, it hated it. It does, but even though that happens, when I hit a target, still it hear it? Right out. The sea hunter is a great machine made by Garrett. I don't normally like Garrett's, but that particular machine I have done really well with, um, especially, you know, in um, wet areas with, with, you know, without a lot of trash and without a lot of iron targets. It does, you know, it's a PI machine. You can discriminate with it, though. Um, it does have the ability to, to tune out a lot of, a lot of junk, but um, really great machine. So if you're looking at a really good water machine, the Sea Hunter is definitely a great water machine. I was. I uh, it got a little redundant, I think. <laughs> Those new nickels sound horrible. <laughs> you go, Russell. <laughs> All right, here's uh basically my wrap up. This is all the uh, coins I found on the hunt. There's also a couple coins in here from uh, earlier today that had nothing to do with the hunt, but uh, 
we're gonna kind of go through there right now and see what we got there you go that was a uh, that's all the stuff I got. A lot of trash off the beach. This is my little uh, precious finds thing, which has nothing in it because I found nothing precious. And uh, I'll let you guys know what the total is here. A lot of nickels. So I'll tally it all up and show you guys what I got. All right, here's the things I found before the hunt out in the uh, wet, um, having nothing to do with the hunt. I did also just notice when I walked up here, I found an old dime that wasn't part of the hunt. We'll see what else we got. Oh, any of those just tell my buddy Walter, I did not find any tokens. I did find a dollar and quarters, so four quarters. I got 34 nickels. I'll do the math on that in a minute. And I got 12 dimes, which makes it a dollar 20. Um, I'm going to say 34 is, I don't know. I'm not sure of the math. We'll have to figure it out. I, I know that it, for every 20, so it's a dollar, let's say a dollar, I'm going to say a dollar 70 in nickels is what I think that is, but I could be wrong. It might be a dollar, I think it's dollar 70. Look at Ralph. Ralph always does well. And then show us the token. There's the token. Five dollar bill. Ralph gets a five dollar bill. Uh, Ralph always does real well on this stuff. Hey, hey, hey. Alright, we got hot dogs. We got all sorts of salads to go with said hot dogs. Yum yum. Alright, here's the wrap up. A lot of trash off the beach. Uh, I did get from the club hunt, uh, doll, uh, let's see, uh, $3.90 and change. Um, the other hunts, I did not get much, but I did get this little cross. I did get uh, two quarters, um, a penny. There's also a dime and a penny that were also from another hunt. Ten steak and some of the other garbage, as you can see. So not a lot of stuff. Again, probably the most boring video you guys have ever watched, but that's what it is. We have a giveaway. I'm going to be giving a shirt away, three rings, and a bracelet. So all of that is going to be the giveaway. All right, you guys, here we go. This is for the big giveaway. A lot of names on there, and a lot of you guys did uh, put five entries in. So here we go. Karen King, you are the winner of the big giveaway. Please email me as quickly as you can at wavestoys at yahoo.com. I'm going to put that on the screen as well. Again, Karen King, you are the winner of the big giveaway. Congratulations. And again, look at that wheel. There are a lot of people, and I mean a lot of people, that were excited about this. So I think the next giveaway is going to be at 750 subscribers. And I think we're right at almost at 600 today, as I, I haven't looked yet, but I think we were really close to 600. Hey, Karen, when you email me, make sure you put big giveaway in the subject line of the email. Hey, friends, Pirate Mike here. I have no idea why I do it, but I always have. Whenever I find a half dollar at the beach, I put it in my eye. I'm not sure if it's because it's the size and it seems like it should just fit. And uh, I'm hoping you enjoy my channel. Thank you again for watching. Would really love it if you subscribe. Just go ahead and click on my head right here, or you can watch one of these two videos.